Good morning, it's Tuesday, February 6th, about 6 a.m. Central Time. Overnight, the precious metals are flat after yesterday's weaker session. You have April gold unchanged at 2043. March silver down 4 cents, 2259. March copper unchanged at 377. And April platinum down 1 at 902. So platinum has had a bit of a swing back and forth, dipping below that 900 level, coming back up into the low 900s, trying to breach back over 910 before having a setback. Some of you did trade that action in the overnight market, I do see. Now looking at some other markets here around the globe, we do have the S&P 500 it's flat it's really focused on rates after Powell reaffirmed that a March rate cut is unlikely now going across the pond here looking at China we did see their stock surge about three percent as Chinese officials continue to make measures to backstop that that economy I believe that's why you're seeing copper futures kind of halt their decline you're seeing crude oil futures bouncing back up just a touch and also soybean futures recapturing that $12 handle on the March basis now looking back at gold gold does trade near a one week low the dollar index at about two and a half month highs i did see a lot of people come in they're trying to short that dollar index 104 and a half we'll see what happens right there dollar index does feel a bit stretched to the upside and i did see some research reports out there from several different large banking and institutions indicating about the same thing looking at gold still etf selling continuing for about 12 straight days and if you flip to the silver market on january 22nd the 23rd and the 24th is when China announced that they were cutting that reserve ratio about 50, 50 basis points. And that's when you saw a big ETF inflow in the silver market. So with it retesting those levels, does that person double up? We'll see what happens here. Looking on the economic front, we got no economic data here scheduled today. We got a lot of Fed speakers, though. The most important one, it's going to be 11 a.m. Central Time. It's Cleveland Fed President Mester. It's an FOMC voter. They're going to speak. And on January 11th, President Mester said that a March March is probably too early, in my estimation, for a rate cut because... I think that we need some more evidence here. They thought that the December CPI reading just shows that there's too much work to do and that they need to take more of a restrictive policy. So you're going to have some hawkish comments most likely around then. If you go to noon and also 1 p.m., you're going to have um, Minneapolis Fed President Kashkari. He's a non-voting member. He'll have a Q&A. And then also Boston Fed President Collins, another non-voter, is going to speak. And of course, you know, they're saying that there's just unevenness in the labor market here. They're seeing too much strength, too many people wanting that dovish pivot here as far as an interest rate cut. So I don't think that they're going to get it. The only one that is speaking that will be dovish is going to be in the evening about 6 p.m. Central. You'll have Fed President uh, Harker and they argue that it's important that they got to move uh, interest rates down. So it's the Philadelphia president and the San Francisco president. Those are probably your two uh, biggest dubs. But again, Philadelphia being a non-voting member here. So looking at silver, people were asking me about the support level. And I really think it's pocket support getting from about the $22.30 down to about the $22 level. I expect to see a lot of buying come in if we do breach below that 22 mark. Copper futures do remain still bullish on the trend after that breakout. That was the January 31st breakout, which failed, and the February 1st open, which sold off, which should have been your red flag that it's a false breakout. So it's just holding on right now about 376.95, kind of a critical level of support. Getting to the gold market, neutral trend. You got to get above 2073 on the upside, really, in order for a breakout and then to continue to go from there. And then on the downside, it's a 200 day moving average, about like 2032 on down to about 2027, your critical level of support. Platinum, again, you could look at a chart, back it up here. Basically, it's sold off from 1050 down to about. Uh, 890 and then it's kind of bounced around there had one or two thrusts up ran in some uh, moving average trouble at the 50-day moving average and also that's a 38% retracement from that 1050 down to about like the 880 
uh, level as well. So we'll continue to adjust some positions here. One market that still stands out, Coco, over the 5,000 mark. I've never seen that in my entire life. And then Bitcoin continues to add on a couple bucks, $500 here, 43,090. So we'll see if that can get any more momentum to the upside here. Really, we need to see a breakout above that 44,500 level in order to really get things going. So got any questions, I'll be on the Schwab Network this afternoon. Uh, yesterday, I was on a trader summit and I'll shoot out those videos here today. Got any questions, give me a call, 312-858-7303. Remember, futures option trading does involve risk loss. May not be suitable to all investors. Good luck, good trading.